In this course in particular, I, I feel pretty confident in attacking with backhands. Uh, the course hasn't changed very much. It's really just about keeping it in bounds and then giving yourself looks. And I think there's a lot of kind of low ceiling shots that kind of favor favor my, my style pretty well. So um, I don't know. I feel confident at this course, but, you know, obviously I'm a little different because I'm not, I'm not throwing any forehands. There was a while where I didn't really use the forehand except for, like, scrambling up shots, and I think that was kind of my game for a long time was really not relying on the forehand, and it hasn't been until really recently in the past couple years that I really started throwing it a lot more off the tee. So I, I don't think it's opened my eyes to new shots. It made me revisit, you know, kind of how I played a little more in the past, you know, with more, more backhands. Nothing new. I mean, I guess I've been messing around a little more with some rollers, but um, I really haven't busted those out. But I, I, that would be the only thing that I feel like I've been working more on, you know, not throwing any forehands. Yeah, I'm definitely trying to rehab to get the forehand back. I, I don't think, like, you know, you can't, you can't really replace a forehand with, with a roller or another shot. I mean... Just like being able to throw through the air, you can control so much more than, than rolling on the ground. So it's something I, you know, will use if I need to right now. But ideally, you know, in the future, we have the, the forehand again. I got a set of exercises that I'm, that I'm working on every day as well as just, you know, increasing blood flow to the area and, um, you know, icing. Just your standard rehab for kind of a tendonitis style injury. I mean, I don't have any scans to confirm that, but there's... Nothing telling me it's something more than that as of now. I feel like I guess I've got a lot of fans here, so and I'm a player that definitely feeds off energy, as most people know. I play well when I have a, you know crowds rooting for me and bringing the energy, and that's something that Texas does. I think it just feels feels homey here. We've played all throughout the state. The Texas State Championships definitely changes venues. Having that kind of hometown feel, even though it's not my home state, is something that's uh, very comforting for me. Yeah, really, the most focus is just st keeping my body healthy, keep you know eating healthy, stretching, doing little core workouts, core exercises to keep the core strong. I think that's important for disc golf to prevent injuries and just injury prevention. This game's hard on the body. I know I heard Calvin talking about elbow injuries, and that's just something that's as an athlete, it doesn't matter how much you stretch and practice, if you overwork and overthrow and just throw as much as we do which is what you have to do to stay at the top level. Sometimes taking a rest, you set yourself back as far as where your game's at. So it's it's a tough balance between practicing as much as you need to to keep your game at a high level, but also not injuring yourself. There's just so many tournaments and I don't want to burn myself out too early. It's one event, it's a great event and I'm sure it was a great week, but for me, it's, you know, I play a lot of tournaments and if there's one event that I miss here or there, uh, I'm, I'm fine with it. I think that there's only what, 10 or 12 events that qualify for the finals at the end of the year. And so you don't necessarily have to play every event. And so, yeah, I just think it's a good for me to kind of let myself progress into the season and not burn myself out early. Beth at 69. I just told myself, you've got to will this one in there. Whatever you have, just will it in there. This man is unbelievable. This is what athletes live for. This is the moment. I feel it's almost the same as last year. There is some more OB. Uh, they also brought some baskets like back and some tea bass longer. I feel like it's a good course for me as well. You need to pick your landing spots and hit your putts as always. So. I feel like it's it somehow feels the same as Lake Waco. We have like three short par, par threes, mm -hmm. uh, holes seven, that should be like 13 and then 16. You kind of feel like you need to bury those holes because they're so short and all of the par fours are like, if you get your tee shot right, it's not like too difficult, but also if you go OB or stuff, the bogeys come uh, pretty fast. Oh, I love the course so much this year. They are cleaning out, they make the course beautiful. A lot of holes, Last year was like so many bush and so many like thorn. They clean it out, and now is the some hole only backhand. Now you can throw siam like it's give two more choice. I'm very exciting this year. Like I said, I really love this court hole 18. Now I can do siam another hole, like, and also the change three hole changing. Now you're gonna see a lot of women go for it, make the putt because before it was like on top of the. Pyramid, whatever, and then, and then you see like boring golf all day, lay up, lay up. This year is going to be different, so yeah. It's always exciting when, you know, the field's pushing the field to get better and it makes for more exciting finishes and, you know, you're going to see people winning from farther and farther down the leaderboard because the scores will hopefully get more compressed. So, I mean, it, I think it's pretty exciting as a player just knowing that you can never really let off off the gas and that every shot matters. It definitely makes it more like mentally stimulating to play. I grew up 
I usually just call it Houston because yeah. greater Houston area. So even though Brock is like kind of middle-ish of Houston, mm -hmm. it's like 40 minutes from where I live. I'm learning how to play on tour still. This is my second year on full tour. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you saw Emerson win last year. How long did it take him to win? Yeah. You know, like you see some players that have been there for so long. How long did it take AB to win? You know, you see those timetables and they're not, they're not quick, especially when you're trying to play as more of a job instead of for fun. Because when I was playing that first year, I think Des Moines was the only tournament I cashed in on the Pro Tour. And I think that's because that was me going just all out constantly. And when it clicked, it clicked. But when it wasn't, I wasn't even cashing. And so now I'm learning to play tour golf, which, you know, there's a little more of that I need. <laughs> you know, I would like to be paid this week. Uh, I don't feel like I have been doing anything different. Of course, I have been learning like YouTube and stuff from different, different people, but I feel like it has always felt the same for me, so I haven't done like any big changes or stuff. So I think that's the secret as well for me that I'm maybe not the longest thrower uh, on the course, but I can I can hit the gaps and I feel like myself when I'm throwing. I feel like I'm just more consistent and I'm I have always been like accurate off the tee, but I feel like I have been good with like fast drivers this year. Uh, I can hit my DD threes on a good line almost every time, and that's important on these courses. I feel like. Uh, anything between like 400 and 450 is like important distance for me at the moment and I just feel like I enjoy this golf and it's easy that way. I've been throwing almost the same stuff for like two years now. If I have like a PD2 I like it to be overstable but all of those DD3s have been in my bag for like two years or now so I know this note of disc so well that I know what to do and it's never the disc, it's always me. I think people saw me throw the second run FD last year with the Hack Club stamp. Uh, that's no longer in my bag. That's kind of sad, but I found a good FD to replace that one, so I'm not sad. And the molds are pretty much the same. I think like the only new mold of disc in my bag would be a Rock X3. The discs definitely do get cycled through. I mean, it's not like I have the same three eagles this year as I did last year. I mean, they, they break in and start to fly different. So my bag pretty much looks the same because I mean, I just have stacks of the same discs that I cycle through, but they're they're definitely different Frisbees. Nervous. I heard it's wind gonna come in tomorrow and the next day and whole weeks. <laughs> I just not good with the putting in the wind. Um, every time uh, when it's windy, I miss a lot because where I live, it's not much windy, yeah. so we not practice putting in the wind much. So cool. Yeah, especially I putting inside my house. I just put my basket inside the hallway, mm -hmm. and I put inside my house, so it's zero wind. Yeah. That's why when I come out here, I have a hard time. So I, I try to put in the wind, and I, I just keep up. I don't know. I that's my big problem. Sure. Tailwind is the most easy, so I can just put high. Headwind, forget about it. You'll, you'll see me miss only like even 10 feet. You'll be like whew, on air ball. Like, yep, that's here I am. Um, no, it's going to be tailwind all day. Um, and then also, um, I heard like this weekend, it might be like wind chipping, like different direction. It's not just only like, oh, okay, tailwind all time or headwind all time. The wind will be, uh, it's going to be, a, we're going to have a hard time this weekend. Um, my drive, I can deal with it, my drive. Um, but a putting, even you 30 feet, you, you're going to have a hard time for putting. I view different. I view different. I, I don't care about the past. I'm a move on person and I already forget about that. For me right now, the future, I want to do it good this tournament. And also even last week, I think I do everything I can. And it just, it just only a couple holes has got me pretty good. But overall, I feel like I do great out there. I come back from 27 plays to, to solo four. When, when I make a two big mistake in the last hole and otherwise I'll be solo podium. And that's very proud. Like, I'm, I'm still very proud. Um, I'm, I'm still have a great time and I already forget about it. And I just like future woman, I believe. So yeah, let's go this weekend. I didn't think that I was that much of a different golfer. The off season kind of can go by very quickly, you know, and it feels like you're on to the next season and kind of moving forward. But as I came up to a lot of the holes, I actually thought like, this seems smaller than I thought it was last year, or this seems a little bit closer, or this seems a little bit more achievable. I'm throwing a mid-range instead of a fairway on some of the holes. So I feel like as I'm here, I am 
maybe witnessing like a little bit of growth, you know, nothing ever doesn't change, but nothing changes much, kind of. This year definitely took a little bit of a different shape. Last season being my first year on tour certainly took a lot of energy and it took a lot of commitment and dedication. And so I think as I look at my career from a longer perspective, I realize that I can't go 100% for the next 10 years of my life. So what this year is going to be is more of a reinvestment into my local community and more of a reinvestment into myself and hopefully to have another flow as I kind of swing into my next season. My dad is the one who got me into it. An ultimate Frisbee and throwing a disc golf disc, even though they are both Frisbees, I'm sure you know fly extremely different. So what I would do in college when I was playing both at a high level was I would be out before practice throwing discs. And then I would play my ultimate practice, throw frisbees the entirety of it. And I'd learn to switch in that first like five, 10 minutes of throwing. And then at the end, I'd stay an extra 30 minutes and throw discs again. And so doing that constantly, whether I'd practice that day, whether I didn't, helped me transition like that. A little bit of form, a little bit of like just, uh, you know, hip turn and like shoulder turn, getting a little more shoulder turn into it. Um, and then also incorporating shoulder turn as well as like hip turn into the, into the shot. I think for me, something every once in a while I do notice is I'll early, you know, a very slight miss, uh, early release. It's not something super, um, where, you know, super bad. It's just a little bit of a timing thing every once in a while that I feel. Yeah. I just kind of focusing on that and really just working on that little things. I mean, just like anything, you're always trying to find little ways to get better. And so that's kind of how disc golf is. That's the beauty of it. That's why we all love it is as soon as you feel like you have it mastered, there's something that pops up that you're like, all right, I'm early releasing. What can I do to get better? And then, you know, maybe it's something else, maybe your, your grip or your, you know, upshots. There's always a part of your game that can get better. The quest of trying to perfect something that's almost unperfectable, you know, it's, it's still golf and it's, it's, it's tough. It's stuff that kind of you, you know, practice during throughout the week, uh, on that hole. I mean, that's a lot of, a lot of it too, is like, we're able to play three, four rounds and throw that shot 10, 20 times before the tournament. So you're able to say, Hey, all right, as soon as I step up to this hole, this is what I want to do. And that's why practice rounds are so important is because you're working on that stuff. Even if you're maybe not, not good at that shot, you have a whole, you know, four, three or four days before the tournament to get to tr get good at it. And I think that's what makes a good professional is being able to pick up stuff quickly. That's why it's so important, you know, when we're playing a new course every week to be able to do that. Last year, I played two rounds. I part like four, 500 part a day. Now, I only afford one round and then part maybe 100, 150. And then I feel my elbow is already like getting pain. So yesterday I practiced. I throw like two or three um, this per hole. And then I was getting feeling hurt my arm, so I didn't even putt yesterday. So today I take a day off, but I need to go putting maybe 100, 150. So I could not afford to injury more. Um, it's just gonna slowly heal. And but so far, you know, I'm getting better, and I think next year will be gone. So right now, it's just the same. Still like 30, 35 percent left. Still the same for so many months right now. And but it can get worse if I'm not careful. But it's getting better? Nope. <laughs> Maybe next year. <laughs>